morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's, a special welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. We're glad that you're here. We pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. As we gather to, to worship our God this morning, we remember that it's a blessing to have the faith that we do. We realize that it's a gift that our Savior God gives to us, and it's also a gift that He uses us to share with others. Everything you need to follow along in the service you can find projected on the screen. And we'll begin with our first hymn in 300. Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a 
Heavenly Father has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer. Souls of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power. Keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. strike his heel. 
This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 51a. You can find that on page 86 in the front of your hymn. It's also being projected on the screen. We'll sing the psalm together. <laughs>
Our gospel comes from Mark chapter 3. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, but they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law, who came down from Jerusalem, said, He is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for him. And he said, Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him, and he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord.
brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of those saints who have been led by the Spirit to the truth of God's Word have been given that precious spiritual gift of faith, trust, reliance in their Savior. I think it's such a, an American ideal. I think it's such a human nature sort of sort of idea or concept and we just we, we, we want it to be true on, on some level which really speaks to our sinful spiritual condition we want it to be true so badly that the vast majority of Christian churches in our country have really fallen into this way of thinking It's the thought that we can, by our own thinking or choosing, by our own spiritual effort, that we can invite Jesus into our heart. That, that, that we can invite Jesus to be our personal Lord and Savior. That, that we can make that decision for Christ. That we can come to God and believe. But it's not true. Scripture doesn't allow us to take that stance. Scripture makes it very clear what our condition is without Christ. And having such a condition as Scripture describes for us doesn't leave any ability for us to come to God, for us to invite Him into our hearts. But it's just such a, an American concept, isn't it? It just sounds so good. It, it makes us want to believe that it's true. Of course, who else can make you believe? So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It just sort of makes sense that we would have to invite Jesus in one parts, right? But then we hear from our psalm that we sang, that we are from conception sinful. And not just the, the sort of sinful where it's a, a spiritual blow that has us less than, than our ideal spiritual condition, where we've taken a, a bit of a step back in our ability to please God. Though we went from maybe an A to a B minus. No, our spiritual condition without Jesus is pretty clear from Scripture. God tells us that we were by nature objects of wrath. Or perhaps you could see it as children of wrath. That the that, that, that wrath of God against sin was held against our first parents against our ancestors, against our parents, against us. Right out of the gate, we find ourselves on the wrong side of the spiritual portal. We're dead in our sins. Unable to do anything to come to God. But our lesson tells us there's something even better than trusting in our own merits. There's something even better than hoping that somehow we are going to make that first step towards God. <clears throat> we believe, therefore we speak. You see, the Spirit is the one who creates that faith. It's a spiritual gift. So we can't take it any credit for it. We're dead in our sins and our God makes us alive because of Christ. We always describe it in confirmation or in Bible information class. Is you, can, you can ask that, that, that dead corpse over there to, to, to come join us for class. And you can even say, I'll give you a thousand dollars, I'll give you a million dollars if you come over and join us for class. It's still dead. 
Dead doesn't have any ability to come to God. Dead doesn't have any ability to even take the first step. It just makes the undeserved love, the grace that God has for us, all that more amazing. We're dead in our sins. We're objects of wrath. We're children of wrath. And yet our God makes us alive in Christ. The Holy Spirit makes us alive, gives us that spiritual gift, and changes our lives for the better. Gives us a new life, and a life that will last. If you think about the Corinthian Christians, if you think about a group of Christians that, that came from this background that didn't have any connection to the one true God. No connection. And then all of a sudden, they have a church. They have a group of believers that now knows who their Savior God is. The Spirit gave them that gift of faith in a remarkable situation because of His love bringing Paul into their midst. Allowing him to, to, to share that powerful word. Working that word into their hearts until there are people that believe in the one true God. The Spirit led them into faith. And yes, sure, they had problems. Yes, sure, that sinful nature still sometimes got the better of them. And that's why Paul had to write two letters to them to correct them. <coughs> still weren't perfect, but they were redeemed. They were reborn. They were made alive because of the Spirit, because of their God. See, it's really a miracle that any of us believe, isn't it? If we're also dead in our sins, just like the Corinthians were, just like every single person is by nature, right from conception. It's really a miracle that any of us believe. And yet, for so many of us, because that miracle happened so soon in our lives with, with our baptism, or so soon in our lives with, with God's Word working that faith in our hearts, maybe it's easy to take it for granted. Maybe it's easy to sort of consider that to be just a part of your life, but not the most important part. But Paul reminds us that we should fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We go every single day living in that seen world with all of those worries and concerns and, and issues and things that keep popping up, things that keep demanding our attention. That's the things that are unseen. Like our Savior God, who made us alive. Like our Savior sitting at the right hand of God. Like the Holy Spirit, who invisibly works faith in our hearts. Those unseen things are the things that last. That bring about eternal life. That just keep going. The Spirit leads us to believe and it's a miracle. Every time someone does a miracle work by God. But that's not it. It's not enough for, for us to simply have this wonderful gift. But the Spirit makes us alive and then gives us a purpose. He, he doesn't just make us alive so that we can continue to, to sit there in that same spot and pretend that we're still dead makes us alive so that we can go out and bring that life-giving message to others. We believe, therefore, we speak. Now Paul mentions, he says, all of this is for your benefit. And he's talking about the fact that, that Paul and those with Paul and everyone that came to share this message about their Savior God, they did it for their benefit, that God shaped events and brought people into their lives. That they could be made alive. And that's what God does with us. 
the unseen forces of our loving Savior God are at work in our lives too. That more people can be made alive. That happens when we speak. And it happens when we share this life-giving message. Now, now sometimes at, at, at seminary, we, we like to talk about the, 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 the hypotheticals, about the, the what-ifs, about could God do this or do that? And it's one of those interesting things people talk about, well, couldn't God bring people to faith in another way? Couldn't God do it this way? And some people use that argument to say, well, couldn't God allow us to turn to Him? Sort of give us that spark and, and allow us to, to, to finish the way. But whenever you're talking about what God could do, the answer is, yes, He could do that. That's important to focus on God's work and what He's told us that He actually has done. Because that's the reality of the situation. That's what really matters in our spiritual life. And we can go down all sorts of rabbit holes when we talk about what God could do. And just because we can answer and say, yes, God could have done things in a different way, doesn't change the reality of how He does choose to operate. That's with us sinful, broken human beings that we are. We believe, which is a miracle. And therefore, we speak to the benefit of not just us, but those around us, so that they too can have that eternal life, so that they too can have that glory that far outweighs all the troubles in this life. All those sad things that get in the way, that, that, that take our attention. We have a message that reminds them that even if those seen things aren't working too well, even all of those seen things in our lives that seem to be Mounting up against us to the point where we're worried, we're stressed out. Maybe, maybe it gives us a, a, an opinion that, that we're not all that great, that we don't really matter, that we're not really loved. Those unseen things, that what God has done in our hearts, what God has done by shaping the course of events for you, that you could know who your Savior is, so that you could be here today to hear about that life-giving message. They're unseen, and yet they matter eternally more than the seen things. We speak a life-giving message, a message that brings about eternity with our Savior, a message that is really life or death. We believe it. But now we have the opportunity to speak it, to share it, to be witnesses of how it's changed our lives. We can leave the results up to God. But God tells us that there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents. I think it's, it's interesting to, to see getting to go to uh, Convention where so many pastors and, and Christian teachers were there up in Watertown this past week. So many different ministries, so many different things going on to try to share the gospel with people. And, and so many different mixed results. Some churches that, that seem to be thriving, some churches that, that seem to be reducing. And it's really not about getting more people to, to be on a list that says that they're members of, of St. Peter's Lutheran Church or they're members of Emmanuel Lutheran Church or, or St. John's Lutheran Church. It's about building that unseen capital C Christian Church. That holy Christian church where people believe in Jesus as their Savior from sin. And even if they never become an every Sunday member at a church where their name is on the list, we see them in heaven someday. That's what matters. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. That's the goal, that someday we get to stand 
next to someone, someone with an eternal soul who is in heaven because God was able to use us as the instrument. And that is something to rejoice about. That is something that we get the opportunity to do every day. We might never know until that day in heaven just how many people God has used us to reach through. But even if it's just one, it's not worth it. We have a message that changes lives. We have a message that makes people alive. We have the opportunity to share. I pray that God gives us many opportunities and gives us the courage and the strength to make the best of those opportunities in His glory. Amen. Please sing. Now may the peace which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. You can find it projected on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead.
Dear Lord, we know that it's because of your intervention in our lives, because of your Holy Spirit, that you have made us alive through your powerful means of grace. Dear Lord, please accept these, our first fruits, and use them so we can continue to share those powerful means of grace in our community and throughout our world so that more people can be made alive and so that they can live eternally with you in heaven. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the prayer of the church as it is projected on the screen. <laughs> Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation and the bounties of the earth, the joy of life and the pleasure of friendship, the good of work and the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and for your son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. This morning in our prayers, we also include a prayer for Diane Tomo, who will be undergoing surgery this coming week. Merciful Lord and Savior, you have promised to be with your believers everywhere and in all circumstances of life. May the assurance of your abiding presence and loving care comfort and sustain your servant Diane as she faces this surgery. Remove all anxiety and fear from her heart and lead her to rest all of her confidence in you. Bless the work of the surgeon and give success to this surgery as it pleases you. Be with her as she recovers and fill her with an abiding thankfulness. <coughs> for all of your blessings. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith and so enable us to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. And hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are His children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Christ on the night of his betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way also after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you much in faith.
lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world. That the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again. That all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you peace.
Uh, we still do need a, 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 about three or four of the, the junior youth leaders. So if you haven't signed up for that already, um, please consider doing that. I've talked to a few of you. You know who you are. And if you have the availability, it would be great if, if you could help out for that. Um, we have Alden Estates tomorrow at, at 2 p.m. So if you're able to, to help out with that and to, to help out uh, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Alden Estates to worship their Lord, that will be taking place at, at 2 p.m. At, at Alden Estates. Um, then we also have uh, our, our second Monday night worship service, uh, Monday, June 11th at 6.30 p.m. So if you have the, the, the chance to, uh, to, to, to worship on, on Monday nights, then, then that's uh, one of our new things we made available for the summer. And uh, um, then one correction on Tuesday, we're actually going to be, uh, strategic planning is also going to be on that Tuesday. So Bible class is going to take place at, at 6, and then strategic planning following at about 6. 40 um, to 7, somewhere around there. But we're sort of transitioning into that uh, uh, strategic plan. So come for, for Bible class at, at 6 and uh, then stay for, for strategic planning at, uh, at 6.30, 6.40, somewhere in there. It's a wonderful opportunity to continue to talk about how we can do more um, ministry here at St. Peter's. Um, Wednesday we have our second softball game, so we had our first against some prairie. We had a uh, a good number. I think we had 15 people that got to come to, to play for that. So that was really fun. We had uh, had some good time, had some fellowship, and the the fun continues this Wednesday at 6:30 um, versus St. John's Jefferson. So should know some people there um, that we can uh, that we can play against there, and then we'll have some refreshments after the game as well. So uh, uh, for for those on the team, um, you can come as early as five, and we can have some some practice and some uh, so so meetings. That. Um, Thursday the 14th we have council meeting at, at 7 p.m. And then uh, already Monday uh, June 18th is when VBS starts so we're, we're geared up for that. Um, this morning we include uh, recognition for all of the, the, the graduates from our, our congregation that have graduated from uh, various uh, high school and, and college and also one seminary graduate as well. Um, so they were in the, the announcements on the, the PowerPoint, they were in the bulletin there, and then there's also flowers on the altar there, so afterwards um, you can talk with uh, Sherry Kristoff and you can get your, your flower to take home for your graduate if you have a graduate from high school or uh, college or, or seminary for that. We're, we're uh, grateful that, that God has, has blessed the, 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 the young people of this congregation with continuing their education to learn more about His world that, we, that He's given us. Um, the, the final announcement, we thought we were, we thought we were in the clear with, uh, Mrs. Nancy Cantor. This one is not about Mrs. Nancy Cantor. Dear members of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church, I'm writing to inform you that I've received a divine call from Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in Marinette, Wisconsin, to teach grades five grade and serve as principal. That gives you a hint. The duties they are asking me to do are very similar to the ones I have here at St. Peter's. They are a little ahead of us as they will be adding 18 students through the Wisconsin Parental Choice Program this year. I think their success is encouraging to us as we consider entering the program. I ask that you join me in praying for the Lord's guidance as I weigh the blessings, needs, and challenges of the two divine calls that the Lord has would have me consider at this time. Knowing our loving God will hear all our prayers and lead me to a decision which pleases Him. Yours in Christ, Mr. Craig Winkler. So we ask that that, that all of our all of our members, all of our, our, our church family here, that we keep Mr. Winkler and his family in in, uh, in our prayers as, as he deliberates these two divine calls, these two opportunities that he has to use his gifts to share that life-giving message of the gospel with the, the next generation. So we ask that that, that God would, would bless him and, and um, feel free to, uh, to talk to him at any point over the, the next four weeks and uh, provide guidance and, and, and encouragement and, 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 and also give the chance to, to, to thank him for his service and also to, 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 to ask that, that he continue to, to prayerfully consider this, uh, this decision. So those are those are the announcements uh, that I have. Make sure that if you have a graduate that you uh, talk to Sharon Christoph and get your, your flower on the altar um, this morning.
May God be with you in this week of grace.